2019 meeting of the Charter Review Committee the order, and it is being recorded. Is it turned? This Sorry. meeting is yep. being recorded. Uh, Annie, everyone is here except uh, Robbie Sullivan and uh, Patty Healy. I heard from Robbie that she will not be with us tonight. Uh, first order of business tonight is to approve the minutes for our last meeting on April 2nd. Before we do that, I just want to again commend Annie for the exhaustive uh, work that she is doing recording all of our uh, discussions. And uh, I appreciate very much how, how well you captured them. Uh, if any member feels, however, that, that um, they, they weren't appropriately um, captured in the in the minutes. This is the time to amend them because this will be the historical record of our proceedings. Can we still be friends, Annie? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, thank goodness. All right. So, a motion to approve. Well, I did have a yeah. clarifying piece. It's on page ten of the minutes. Okay. It's just um, it's Molly Fox asked why is this will needed as opposed to a city councilor and my potential conflicts can't be solved by counselors. This is in relation to the ombudsperson question or consideration. And I would just say um, it was more that it just seemed to me that we may have been missing some key information uh, that could, should potentially be considered before um, the committee votes. I don't actually think that was my question. It might have been your question, Bob. Well, you're proposing a specific um, amend amendment to the minutes. Well, yeah. Uh, that sounds like something I would have said. You know. I think that well, I think that was actually Bob's question, and more my my point was just um, I wanted to reach out for some more additional information before we um, consider further. So okay. that would be my amendment. So I, I don't know what the process is. Yeah, actually. I don't really either. So I should well, change you can that. You Bob. would amend the minutes to move to amend. Mm -hmm. Move to amend what you like the minutes to reflect and then a second and a vote on the amendment. I move to amend what I would like the minutes to reflect. Yeah, and then uh, to and maybe even give the line that you would prefer. Though. Um Molly Fox um, felt that we were missing some key information uh, that should be considered by the committee before we vote. How's that? Is there a second? Okay. Annie, can I emphasize how marvelous I think you are? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I want it to be correct. So, and should I change your name to Bob Bullrace? Well, you should change my name. I'm still well, calling, but. No, I mean in that sentence that you're questioning. I think that specific question was Bob's question. Mm -hmm. um, so. I, I have a problem with that. Okay, so the amendment is that paragraph uh, becomes Bob Bullbrice asked why. Is that right, Bob? Is he reading that? <laughs> and then the amendment that Molly offered follows that. Okay. okay. Any other amendments? Amendments? Yeah. Okay. With the amendment as stated by Molly, those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Uh, aye. Any, any opposed? I abstain. And one abstention. Who is not present? Uh, uh, do, any, do either do you have to, okay, do either of you uh, want to address us today? No. Mike? Yeah. Yes? You do. Uh, do I have something to say? Yes. Right. Would you like to uh, talk to us during the public comment session? Yeah. I put my name there. Okay, good. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, I got the uh, minute, you know, the minutes, the charter review minutes, and um, it seems to indicate that the committee is going to discuss the matters that were raised at the last meeting by the city um, city officials. 
Um, there's no indication like that uh, Fred Zimnick and I were talked about the uh, city manager idea, um, which is not a radical revolutionary idea, but there's no indication that you're going to discuss it tonight. And so I would just want to clarify because a lot of times citizens like us feel invisible or sometimes don't feel that there's this whole business about transparency. So that's my point I wanted to make was that when citizens come to your meetings and raise particular issues that they would like to see the Charter Commission discuss, that this be acknowledged in some way in terms of the meeting minutes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, we did uh, discuss it. It was in the minutes for the meeting in which you presented, uh, which was the last, uh, well, actually the only meeting we had in March. You were here in March and talked to us about uh, replacing the mayor with the city manager. And then we discussed, that was on the agenda for April 2nd, and we just did discuss it uh, on April 2nd. Okay. So you, your, your proposal, your suggestion, your idea was certainly noted by the committee and it was discussed um, two weeks ago. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. But still, I think there's a point to, to that, that maybe it's, that when people come to the meeting that it be acknowledged in the minutes. Well, it, it, it is say? in the minutes of uh, the, uh, the March, it, it is in the minutes of the April 2nd meeting that we discussed what you suggested, but it is also in the minutes from the March uh, 19th meeting that you presented your suggestion. Okay, I'm mistaken. So it's, 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 We're not mistaken, misinformed? Well, uh, you can... You can, Mike, you, can check, didn't come to the Mike, you can check the minutes and you'll see that uh, it was uh, recorded quite clearly uh, both March 19th that you presented your suggestion and then we discussed it on April 2nd. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I've added this uh, update from committee members uh, to the agenda just so if any of you have information that you want to present to us uh, that's not taken care of elsewhere on the agenda, this is an opportunity to do that. So if there's anybody who has anything they want to present that's not um, otherwise on the agenda tonight, please, please do now. Well, um, I want to make sure it's not on the agenda, but was this would this be the appropriate time to mention the um, questions we um, talked about reaching out to Alyssa Klein, um, the um, city councilor, and her response. I do have her response. Happy to share it now. We're happy to share it another point. Regarding the ombudsperson. That's right. That is on the agenda. It is on the agenda? Is that on the agenda? Yes. Great. Okay. I'll wait till then. Okay. Anyone else? The only thing I have that's not on the agenda, and I'll explain why it's not. We talked about inviting the fourth library representatives to return here to discuss their proposal to uh, fill a vacancy on the trustees. They preferred to come to the first meeting in May, which is May 7th, so they will be here on May 7th. Uh, next item, we need to discuss uh, the special municipal employee status for, for us as members of the uh, Charter Review Committee, and I believe either Leanne or Alan will address. I am. Um, I think that was the 
that would be me. Okay. So, um, just for anyone who is, doesn't, doesn't know anything about what we're talking about when we talk about special municipal employee status, there are certain, let me back up. Under the, the conflict of interest law, anyone who holds any position, paid or unpaid, temporary or permanent, uh, and you're included, you are considered municipal employees for the purposes of the conflict of interest law. For certain municipal employees, particularly ones that don't work full time, ones that, that uh, don't get paid, uh, such as yourself, you qualify for something called special municipal employee status. And before you think of yourself as being special, let me tell you what that means. There are really two ways that being a special municipal employee um, loosens the ethics laws with regard to your participation as a, a member of this committee. They are, if you are planning to represent someone else before a board or a committee of the city or represent someone else's interests before the city, if you are just a regular municipal employee, you can't do that. But if you're a special municipal employee, you can represent other people before other boards or committees that have nothing to do with charter review. So, uh, for instance, um, if your, your aunt needs a special permit from the planning board and you want to go in and represent your aunt and advocate for your aunt to be your aunt's agent at the planning board, if you're a regular municipal employee, you can't do that. If you're a special, you can because that agency has nothing to do with this committee and so you can do that. The one other area is holding contracts with the city. There are prohibitions against municipal employees, general municipal employees, holding contracts, holding financial interests in contracts with the city outside of the employment contract. And if you're a special municipal employee, those rules are loosened up a little bit. Okay? There are ways that you can hold contracts as long as the contracts are done with public bidding and they're a different department and you file disclosure forms. There are, there are exemptions that are available to you so that you might hold contracts with the city. Otherwise, it makes no difference at all. I mean, those are the two areas that special municipal employee status are important. Um, the process of um, of becoming special is just to have the city council vote and the mayor sign it, and that's it. And then you're special, you're on, it, there's an ordinance, so we would update the ordinance to include this committee. When we did the ordinance, this committee didn't exist, so you, did, you didn't get on the, on the list, but we can put you on the list if that's the committee's desire, and, and as long as the city council and the mayor will go along with it, I don't see that they would have any reason not to. So that's what I have to say. It's a very limited and you know, very focused difference between special and general. But if you are planning to represent your aunt at the planning board, or you're planning to contract with the city, now's your time to speak up and, and, uh, and move this committee toward becoming special municipal status. Can I just ask a question? How long after, so this committee is limited duration. How long after? ceases to exist, does that still apply? Um, well, after you leave this committee, anything that you actually dealt with uh, in this committee, um, you would be forever prohibited. Otherwise, I mean, so if, if there's something, and this that really doesn't apply here very well, but you know, there are other boards, like, like the planning board, could have something come before them and then turn around and now you're working for the person and, and now you're trying to appear before your board. Uh, you couldn't do that if it ever came before you as a municipal employee. Generally, it's a year after you leave. And where did you sit on multiple unpaid boards for the city? And, and you're a, this only applies if you're getting compensated on any of your, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. So this new information that you've discovered, 
relative to when... I haven't even talked about that yet. Well, Lynn doesn't know about Lynn it. Lynn knows about okay. it. Lynn knew about it before you did. Okay. <laughs> because she has the PTO problem also. So. Okay. I mean... But it's just, we're already precluded from, uh, the two of us are precluded from presenting business before any other... Uh, that's right. Even if, so, another rule is that if anyone's going to be a special here, everyone's a special. You can't pick and choose people on a board to be special. It, it's all in or all out. And so I called the State Ethics Commission today because I know there are two people on this committee who can't be special in their, in their other lives. Bill can't be a special because he is paid as a counselor and Lynn obviously is a full-time employee. She can't be a special. And so I called to say, what do I do? I can't, we, can they all be, can none of them be specials because they can't be specials? Well, the way the law works is that they can be specials for this committee, but that doesn't help them because if you want to claim special status, you have to be special in every, in, in all of your roles. So it doesn't help them at all. Actually, what I learned was they're out of compliance because in order to serve at the behest of the pr council president and the mayor, they have to file disclosure forms because they are, forget it, it's, <laughs> How has this been handled um, in the past for the Charter Review Committee? Uh, has, has it been designated? Well, some of the, some of the, actually, the last, Alan knows better than I, I think the last time this didn't come up, the issue of the I don't think it came up, and uh, it wasn't under this charter. It was one in nine years ago. And the state ethics law yeah, has this changed right. a, a lot. So, so the are, are you saying, Alan, then, that the seven of us who were appointed as ward representatives could be special? No, you all, you'll, you'll all be special for the purposes of this committee. We are special. Not yet. Not yet. But, but, we, but if we vote to ask that we be designated as special, then uh, the, the two uh, uh, members appointed to represent the legislative and executive branches could be could be exempted from that special well, we, status. No, no, they would be specials to this committee. Yeah. They'd be specials for this committee, yes. but not specials in their other roles. Okay. And if you're going to um, try and use your special status, you have to be special in every role. So we really, the, the fact is you don't get any benefit in front of it. They are special municipal employees, but they're not going to get any benefit from it. Okay. So it's really about the seven, seven ward, ward representatives. <coughs> okay. Uh, does anyone feel... Um, a need to uh, become a special? I mean, in other words, Alan outlined the areas that it might affect us. Do, do any of you feel that, that, that you might fall into one of those two areas and you want to be protected by a special status? Well, I, I have to say, I came in late and I apologize for that. I would get out of work late. Um, I, I read the, the beginning, it was it was somebody mailed, but um, this, um, does this mean that you can't, as a member of the committee and a special person, you can't represent yourself or others in other city, um, I don't know if I'm going to say it. So if I have a, if I, can I represent an organization in front of the city council? Um, does that in any way conflict with my role here? It could. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It could. And what about simple advocacy for other organizations right. that operate in, that I have to be involved with? <coughs> if you're a member of it, if you're acting as its agent or attorney, those are the that's ones. It. Agent or attorney. So I could be an agent of the nurses' union that is represented by the hospital that might come forward in front of the city council about something and ask the city council for something. Okay. You could always represent yourself. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're talking about acting as attorney or agent for someone else or some mm -hmm. other entity mm -hmm. in a matter in which the city has a direct and substantial interest. Mm -hmm. I don't know what interest the city has in, in, in the nurses' union. I, I can't imagine the city has any direct and substantial interest, really. other than you know looking for some political 
you know, support for whatever the union is trying to do. But, um, so that's, that's the key. You cannot act as attorney or agent or be compensated by any other entity in a matter before the city in which the city has a direct and substantial interest. So in other words, again, if your aunt needs a special permit at the planning board, mm -hmm. as you sit here today, you would not be able to be the compensated by your aunt to do this, mm -hmm. and you would not be able to be the agent of your aunt before the planning but board. But it's not just compensation, it's if you're acting as an agent. As an agent? And Patty's come before us, for instance, in, in advocating for the referendum uh, about um, nurse staffing mm -hmm. uh, quotas, and, and that would not be a conflict. Mm -hmm. That would be a conflict because the city has no direct hospital. There's no, we have no agency over the right. hospital mm -hmm. other than whatever zoning applies, and you're not calling for a zoning change for the hospital. Right. Um, so I, I really, given your job and what you do, I don't see where the potential mm -hmm. could. I'm not sure what Bob's conflict would mm -hmm. possibly be, but is something similar to that? that no, just, no, no. I mean, I'm, <coughs> I'm reaching and it's hard to imagine, mm -hmm. you know, you try to speculate what can happen in 10 months, but, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a member of a community garden, for example. Suppose a flood or act of God occurred and the to find members of that organization appeal to the city council for help. Would I be prohibited in, in participating in that? You would be prohibited from being the agent of the corporation or whoever operates the community garden. Is this a city thing? It's a, well, mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, it's a, and it's, it's, it's city-owned property cooperatively managed by the participants of the community mm -hmm. garden. So if that cooperative designated you as the agent to go represent the cooperative before the mm -hmm. city, that would be a conflict. So you just have to get someone else to do that. Right, exactly. <laughs> or you could go up and say, my name is Bob Bolris, and this is what I think about what you yeah. should do well, at the field. Identify by plot number, I'm E32. <laughs> oh, so we're going to refer to you as that from now on? <laughs> Only if you want tomatoes. <laughs> we, can't, we can't predict um, what might happen over the next eight and a half months. Mm -hmm. um, would, is there any downside to this committee becoming special municipal? No. And my suggestion is that we uh, go ahead and seek that status. I see that it gets on the May 2nd agenda. Mm -hmm. May 3rd? So What's that? It feels so special. <laughs> that does require us to um, take and the certification for, uh, you go online and take a little test for ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so we have to do that. Oh, so that's, yeah. it, there's no other requirement beyond no. that? No. Um, just, just have the city council to vote and maybe something. Did you pass? Council. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Repeat it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're all special and we feel very special. Yeah, we do. That's why I need to make you feel special. <laughs> Good job. Mm -hmm. um, the next item on the agenda is to uh, continue our discussion about the uh, what is what is uh, referred to in the charter uh, as part of the, the introduction to the charter is the tangible and related laws. Um, uh, and there was there was a question raised uh, two meetings ago about whether all the all the laws that are cited, all the acts that are cited in this this document are are belong there, I guess. Are, and, and then we we asked last week or last meeting uh, Brown to. Uh, to offer any thoughts he had, and he, uh, I think he needed some time to review it. Uh, I took a look at it, and it seems to me that this is uh, this is not exhaustive. Um, uh, in fact, the first editor's note said, included in this attachment are spe special acts of the general court, which are current amendments to the charter, special acts which may be of current interest to the user. It is by no means a comprehensive reproduction of all special acts related to the city. That's presented merely for the convenience of the uh, 
I, I think the question that was raised referred specifically to the uh, to the act uh, of 2002 that established the Board of Public Works. And of course now there is no no longer a Board of Public Works. In some of the some of the acts in this document have footnotes, editor's notes, which which point out that that particular act was repealed by the by the charter of 2012. So from from my reading of it, I think the only thing we might want to do is to put a similar footnote uh, with uh, the act of 2002, which established the Board of Public Works, noting that that, I believe, that section, that act was repealed by the 2012 charter. Well, if I may, yes. I, if, if I recall, the reason that these were kept in place was that after the charter was ratified, there was a, there was a period, I believe it was a year, between the time when the charter was ratified and the mayor uh, filed with the city council his administrative order reorganizing city government. And so we needed to leave these things in place, or at least some of them in place, because um, there was no other way to have the Board of Public Works without the act until the, the mayor entered his administrative order and eliminated the Board of Public Works. My feeling is that these are, at this point, irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They're all irrelevant. Mm -hmm. All of this has been superseded by either the charter or by the administrative mm -hmm. code. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the Smith School, how the trustees of the Smith School, the superintendents are elected, all in the charter. Um, I, I, I'm of the opinion that we don't need these related laws to be attached to our charter anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody wanted to see what the acts of any one of these particular acts, you could go online to the historic acts and resolves of the Commonwealth and read all these acts. They're all there. It's not like we delete them from the charter and they, they're vaporized. They're, they still are in the repository of special acts that the state keeps. So what you're suggesting, I think, Alan, is that it's misplaced. It no longer needs to be a, a charter attachment one. It, it, I wouldn't say it was misplaced. I think it's no longer relevant okay. because the mayor has finished, mm -hmm. has put the fork in this with by by his administrative code. Is that your recollection? I, I would think so. Yeah. And I think it's resolved by a simple email to the code company asking them to remove it. Yeah. I don't think it needs an actual formal act. No, this isn't part of the charter. This okay. is outside the charter. So. Um, well, 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 okay, I'll accept it does, it is headed here, um, Charter Attachment 1, so, I mean, for the, the sort of the lay person, um, right, but this, it's attached to the charter. I understand, but it didn't go to the, leg yeah. this wasn't what was enacted by the legislature, this, in 2012. I understand that. Okay, so, what, all I'm saying is that we can leave it, we can put another footnote in, just, Saying that all of these have been superseded, or we can just eliminate attachment one from the charter. And I don't think we need an act of the legislature to do that. I hope not. Bill, any thoughts on that? The only thought I had is that actually the old document had all of those little tailings and uh, anachronisms attached to them at once upon a time. The old charter and it became more abundant and very difficult to navigate. I think for simplicity's sake and accessibility for the for uh, someone who is trying to investigate or at least understand the charter, it's best to eliminate as much confusion or whatever tangents there are. And and as Alan pointed out, I think that this is more relevant than it used to be. And as Lynn said, it actually is permanently memorialized in, in well, as much as anything can be memorialized in, on. <laughs> In the internet, but um, it, it it is accessible if someone wants to, to backtrace the references. But I, the cleaner, as far as I'm concerned, the cleaner the document, the better. I agree. Uh, your suggestion, Alan, in terms of how we now get it, get rid of it. You know, I would make the recommendation to the city council that. Uh, that uh, attachment one be deleted. Okay. Uh, uh, is there a motion for that? Make a motion. Make a 
motion. Second. Okay. Uh, I think given we've, we've adopted the practice of having roll call votes on all of the recommendations we're making. So I mean, we roll call. This is a vote to recommend to the city council that <coughs> attachment one related laws be deleted from the charter. Any further discussion? Is there an attachment two? There is not. This is this is the only attachment as far as I know. So should another attachment be made, it would be number one? Just trying to prevent going forward. Going forward. Going forward. Going forward. Yeah, if we ever were to, I don't know why we would attach something to the charter, uh, but it would be one or A. Yeah, I mean, if the point is to make it easier for people to navigate, and if they go, if some time in the future someone goes in and says, oh, there's a number two, where's number one? Just asking. Oh, yeah, no. I, it, there's a list of attachments here. It says attachment one. That's all. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Further discussion? Okay. I guess so we recommend to the council that the attachment one related laws be deleted. No vote will leave it. Stan Moulton? Yes. Robbie Sullivan? Absent. Dylan Gaffney? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Bob Bullrace? Yes. Patty Healy? Yes. Molly Fox? Yes. Lynn Simmons. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Yes. Passes. Thank you. Okay. Now uh, we have uh, four other uh, possible wording changes to uh, vote on tonight. Um, the first is. Uh, Section 210, uh, City Council confirmation of certain appointments. This was tabled um, from the last meeting uh, for uh, for discussion, including getting Councilor Dwight's uh, uh, view on this. I think I think the proper procedure here is, is to have a motion to take it off the table. Is that what you're doing? It, it was there was a motion and it was uh, seconded and then it was tabled. Yes. Yes, so I move that we take it off the table for, for, for discussion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, that, that would probably require a vote. Oh, okay. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, these, are, these are probably best taken as two separate possible changes. Um, and the discussion last week centered more on, last meeting centered more on the question of, of having no uh, time limit in July and August because of the council's single meetings in July and August. There was concern expressed both by Allen and by Council Bidwell who was here about not capping it at, at any the short meeting schedule is not actually prescribed. It is just generally accepted that um, we, the business uh, in those months and also the likelihood of people not being able to attend was higher. So uh, we decide when we when we first assemble after being sworn in to pick our schedule and we usually say we'll do one meeting in July and one meeting in August but with a full understanding it's completely possible that we would call a special election should it be needed. Um, I'm not sure what Council Bidwell said in reference to this or, or Alan so I'm sorry about that but the um, if a candidate issue came up during those months it is possible for the council to call uh, for and, and schedule a second meeting that month. Um, we've, I mean, I think it was, actually when we were doing the charter the last time, I believe we worked all through the summer. We actually met twice each summer. We ended up with a special each time anyway. So, um, so I'm not so sure, I'm not, yeah, I mean, I, I'm ambivalent on this. Uh, one point that Councilor Bidwell made was that 
another option is to uh, adjourn a council meeting to into a uh, uh, a, a meeting of the, 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 the subcommittee sub yes. that deals with these appointments. Yeah, and then return to the council. Meeting. We have done that too. Yes. Um, yes, we have the meetings within the meetings. In fact, we do it with every finance committee meeting. Mm -hmm. The finance committee meeting is embedded in the actual council meeting. Um, we could do, and we've done it with community resources in the past, usually for appointments and stuff. Mm -hmm. When, when, because the clocks were ticking, um, we would incorporate their meetings within ours. And it qualifies. It's a public meeting. In fact, it's more public than usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I mean, I, you know, we do have the flexibility. This is not one of those ones that makes me. Uh, when I looked at it, when I was looking at it the other day, and I went, it's not one of those things where I went, oh, of course, that's crazy. I can't believe we would have set ourselves up for this. This one, I, I think this is a solution looking for a problem. I'm not sure that yeah. it's necessary. But I haven't discussed it with um, Council Bidwell. He wasn't the one who originally raised this. Uh, he happened to be here. On another matter, on oh, when it came his own matters, yeah. and uh, uh, he he made these observations during our discussion. Um, okay. uh, you know, as a general rule, the clocks are problematic, but there there is an, an aspect of it that's necessary for sure, but. We do it like a deadline. Exactly, and the deadline, yeah. mm -hmm. and we have run into problems previously trying to make sure that we one. I mean, one of the things is once the clock starts ticking, sometimes public discussion might or uh, open public discussion might be uh, sacrificed, and that that's the part that concerns mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But by and large, um, we've been able to accommodate any. Any anomalies? Well, it was actually uh, in, in the minutes of uh, the March 19th meeting reflect that it was actually Councillor Shera who oh, raised this this issue, uh, and she she said that because of the lag of two meetings each summer month, uh, the time frame can be challenged. It's it's her committee that would definitely suffer the most. It's community resources appoint, uh, in charge of reviewing appointments and presenting to the council with that clock. Mm -hmm. But that schedule can change term by term, right? Like the community resources when they. Yeah, that's another good point. Yeah. Those are subject to uh, those calendars, those scheduled meetings are scheduled based on the membership's ability to attend them. So as circumstances change, those meeting times could change. We do try to do it in such a way that it works out that the meetings occur before the next council meeting, but it's, it's sometimes actually impossible. But um, I mean, I take the point. I understand, and and it's harder. It's a harder lift. It's a heavier lift to actually try and schedule a, a, a special meeting in the summer because, as I said, everyone's got a conflicting calendars have already sort of presumed that that meeting is not going to happen, but so. Does anyone have any strong feelings that uh, it makes sense to remove that or change the cap during July and August? When you make exceptions, my understanding should provide terms of what the exception is, right? I mean, you can't just simply exempt those two months and then. Well, that, that was the point that was raised right there is what happens in July and August. And I, I think I raised two points. One, <clears throat> would it make sense just to extend a little bit, you know, the deadline for the whole year? Or you know, sometimes committees have to have special meetings. That's, that's real life. You have to have meetings. And so, but I would not like to see this just exempt July and August without saying what happens in July and August. Mm -hmm. What is the deadline? Mm -hmm. Have there been instances, Bill, where you think 
regardless of what time of year it is, that 45 days is is uh, restrictive? Yeah, yeah. No, the 45 days sometimes is restrictive, but as Alan said, there's nothing like a deadline to make us mm -hmm. try to figure it out. It's actually, oddly enough, it's Pam who's actually endured more of the, the weird conflicts that came up because when these clocks just started, Pam was in the unenviable position of trying to hurt the cats and get us to keep us on our game because we don't keep those clocks in our head and we don't anticipate it when we when we refer something out we aren't thinking that once we start this process a clock is ticking and this is the prescribed amount of time and that was and that, that was Pam's job to keep us on to keep us honest Lord does that now but may I and I can't remember any time where it was unsolvable it was we, we did, a, 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 you know, when I was your um, clerk uh, to the council, um, there were a couple of appointments that just had to be pushed through because we didn't have the meeting. It was just a done deal because we didn't meet the 45 day time limit. That's right. Well, um, does anyone feel that extending the time limit to <coughs> 60 days, for example, would be a, 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 a solution. I can't think of a problem offhand, but that's not because it doesn't exist. It's because I'm just trying to imagine the math and the scenario. So, I mean, this is relative to appointments. And the salient parts of those are, one, that the appointee be qualified to serve and does not cause harm. And the other is that those positions don't remain vacant for too long. Usually the appointments come because there's a critical need for their, their service. So, I mean, 60 days, that's pretty much the lifespan of most things in municipal <laughs> government is the start of, you know, uh, 60 days. So I, I don't, I, I don't, I'm thinking aloud, and it's not fair for you guys to watch me struggle with this. So I, 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 <laughs> we're like we're joining. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't know. It seems okay to me, but I. I right, well, well, Pam was among those who spoke to this issue, although I think she is more concerned with the less than seven day um, clause. Mm -hmm. But, but you've been here through the discussions, and you live this, Pam. Is a sixty day uh, cap. Does it make more sense to you than 45 days? I think the, four, the 60 days would work, most okay. definitely. I think that even, you know, we, when we missed those appointments, it was by, you know, it was by days. It wasn't by, right. you know, weeks. It was just definitely by days. Mm -hmm. Remember that, I, I just want to put this into a different context, that you may be looking at <coughs> appointments that are necessary in order for a board to function because there's no quorum. Right. And so, I mean, the balance here is getting this done as quickly as possible. And if, you know, there have been many dozen appointments, and we've heard about one or two that it didn't work out for. Mm -hmm. um, I would hate to push everything out because if you give 60 days, you know how long it's going to take? Mm -hmm. 60 days. And, yeah. and, you know, this is kind of a balance between, you know, you know, a generous amount of time and making sure that the boards and committees that really are the engine that runs a lot of this city are staffed and uh, with the full complement of members. So that's the balance. So I was, I mean, I would throw out there that if you're thinking about extending maybe 15, you know, another two weeks, it sounds like it might be a, you know, a bit much. It was a couple of days that they needed. So maybe going from 45 to 50 might make sense. Um, but, you know, and I think, am I wrong, Lynn, that the mayor has been trying to get these these appointments sort of... Yeah, so with the administrative code, everyone, when the statute, when the statute was silent or didn't exist for a border committee, uh, all of the term limits were changed from July to June, like staggered three-year terms, generally. So almost everybody would cycle off at the same time, so we're putting, we'll be preparing to put forward the ones that will expire at the end of June, 
in May. So that because we're cognizant of that 45 days. And I don't recall in the last two years that 45 days being a problem. I don't know if people have just gotten used to it, the council's better about it, or the mayor's office is better about submitting them and just keeping that calendar in mind, but I don't <coughs> recall one in the last two years. Well, of course, now that you've coordinated like this, there would be a blizzard of appointments all at <laughs> yeah, once. Right, right. So it might be difficult for the committee to, because what they do is they split up um, the members of that committee of the community resources and they interview each of the applicants but if you've got 40 applicants coming down all at once that might be more like 100 <laughs> oh my god okay so I'm not signing up for that committee. <laughs> so so 100 applicants coming at once one or two on each they're they're staggered terms so it's generally one or two on each most committee three right and not we, all all the committee members but yes right so. and then some cycle off because they move away or because you know life changes and they right. step off so we put people forward throughout the year anyway right um, those but are the bulk of places. them we send in may so that they don't lapse over the summer Lynn, am i hearing you correctly that you feel the 45 day we know is is yeah, I don't, I don't feel one way or the other about changing it at all. I know initially there were some issues and it could have been because there were appointments that would expire all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. And council was getting used to that 45 day clock as was the mayor's office. So I feel like we're all you know, a little bit better about it now um, because I don't remember one that has bumped up to that in the last two years. Dylan. Um, so I've, I serve on a board that has trouble meeting quorum for some votes uh, due to extended illnesses of a single member, uh, requirements of membership. We have to have a certified architect on the board and things like that, so it can be hard to find new members. So there's certainly 60 days could, you know, if we have a demolition delay hearing where we're required legally to have the public hearing in 30 days, that's already difficult and maybe we just need to be more proactive about finding membership but with those requirements it can be really hard so I would think that 60 might be a little bit too much I would I wouldn't have a problem with going 45 to 50 or something like that um, or saying 45 um, but I can see ways it would have created problems for us mm -hmm. in the past. I'm fine with for keeping it at 45, but I'm cognizant of the issues Yeah, to the less than seven point, that actually is, that's actually a harder window to, to manage, I think, to Pam's point. That one's, there's not a lot of, there's no wiggle room in seven. Yes. And, and I, as I believe it's seven business days. So it doesn't count we guess no it's seven okay this is where i always get confused some of these things are just business days some of them are actual weekdays which include weekends which you don't when you don't meet or things can't happen so that becomes problematic in, in and of itself so this is technically even shorter less than seven it's actually less than five if you consider that the weekend is basically there's nothing going to happen on the weekend and that 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 makes for some front end work that might be harder to navigate, but that's more out of the mayor's office and out of the clerk's office that work than, than the council's. I mean, there's <coughs> technically a built in two day window because when you right, submit yeah, something. Public become, yeah. So, again, I don't feel one way or the other because I think we've worked out a lot of those kinks. Um, but you know, there's times when we submit something and it goes to council Thursday and your committee meets Tuesday and you can't get it on that agenda. But you don't have a strong feeling about I this. Don't. So, okay. Well, uh, rather than try to summarize what Pam has said before, I'll just ask Pam to repeat what she said before. You'd like to get that phrase removed. You're talking about the seven days? Less than seven days, yeah. So, so when, the, when the city council meets on a Thursday and they refer something to the following Monday, they can't technically, because of this stipulation, have it on their agenda for the following Monday's meeting. So it ends up waiting, and this, I think, is part of the problem when you get into the summer, 
it ends up waiting the additional whole month and then depending on when they schedule their once a month meeting in July or August, um, that's when they run into difficulty with the 45 day on the other end. So if for a meeting that happens on a Thursday, if the meeting were to happen the following Monday or Tuesday, and that needs to wait until the following month in order for their, the appointment to be taken up, it can be, it can be a problem, I think. Um, if it were a little, if it were a little less restrictive, um, but you know we sort of coordinated getting the um, getting the meeting notice posted for the committee. Let's say that the same day that the the item was on the agenda for the city <coughs> council meeting, if it went on to an agenda for the committee meeting, if you had that flexibility built into the um, to the charter, then. That the appointment could be passed through a lot quicker. Can you, can do you follow you do what I'm that? Saying? Yeah, so is it possible? So, like, if something passes city council on Thursday to get referred, can you put it on that committee's agenda before it gets passed? Well, it's possible that given there can be the presumption that it would be referred. Okay. That there are some um, things that have to be referred, yeah, including that's true. these things have that's to true. be referred. Okay. And, you, and you can presume that it's referred, and if it doesn't manage to make referral, you can delete it from the, the agenda of the committee meeting. Uh, it, right. it, it, it's basically a placeholder. So even if we get rid of the less than seven, there's still, by default, a two-day cushion because of open right. meeting law posted. Yeah, because open meeting okay. law will post it, and that is, does not include weekends. Yeah. Either, so. Wait. So. Can't. Right. So, so technically, the way it's worded now, mm -hmm. with the um, shall not make a recommendation to the full city council. So, it, so technically, they they can't meet to rec make that recommendation and then send it back to the city council on the Monday. So you'd have to reword that so that it said something to the effect of um, shall make a recommendation to the full city council, um, provided that there is ample notification of 48 hours or whatever to the public so that they can participate in the discussion. So essentially the posting would have to go up on Thursday, the same day that City Council reviewed it, reviewed the appointment, and then it could be discussed on the following Monday. By our rules now, uh, appointments now are folded into what's called the consent agenda. And the consent agenda doesn't have debate unless somebody, unless a council calls to have it removed. Mm -hmm. But um, and that's actually a new mechanism that um, uh, Council O'Donnell instituted, and it actually works. It does get the more perfunctory items moving faster, and, and so. I think with that, if it's embedded in the consent agenda, there can be a presumption that it would rightfully be referred. I like Pam's idea of actually just stipulating that, um, because as you noted, what we have is a requirement by open meeting law to have 48 hours, uh, business hours, basically, <coughs> to uh, post these things in order for the public to be aware. <coughs> So, I'm sorry, Bill. You, you like PM's idea, and, and uh, would you uh, would you like to offer an amendment to this uh, wording here? Sure. Um, let's see, Pam. How did you phrase it? Actually, did it really well. It was um, uh, uh, well um, to take. So it would be to review each candidate for appointment and shall make a recommendation to the full city council but remove the less than seven days. Right. Mm -hmm. And it would be provided that posting is, you know, meets the open meeting law requirements. I don't think you, I don't think you need have to, have to put that in the charter. Right. Every just, meeting has to meet the open meeting law requirements yeah. that should not be in the, that should not be in the charter. Every meeting has to meet So just strike. Less just strike the seven, seven days. Door. If there are, if, if if the notice hasn't been posted 48 hours in advance, not including weekends and holidays, it can't be taken up at the next meeting. It just mm -hmm. can't. And so, uh, but that doesn't need to be. In the 
Okay, so so actually, yeah, I, I would move that we strike not less than seven, um, and nor because it's, that won't be necessary. Uh, so let's see. Shall make a recommendation to the full city council. Not more. Not more. Not more than forty-five days after the referral. Yeah. Okay. That that is your amendment to this language. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any any further discussion? Okay. Yeah. The um, amendment then uh, a, a yes vote would strike. <coughs> Less than seven nor and would leave the forty-five day uh, cap on the on the other hand. A yes vote will recommend that less than seven nor be deleted. A no vote would leave it. Can I well, just sorry yes. before we just I I wasn't involved in the last conversation when this these dates were put in here, but I'm just wondering is that seven days there to give the public adequate notice that this person was referred and or does it give the council time to do its due diligence on scheduling the person talking to the person I don't know see what other information comes to light before they put them on an agenda maybe it doesn't matter but I feel like there was a reason why that seven days maybe was there well the 45 days certainly addresses the interviewing process and the public exposure mm -hmm. process and public opportunity to opine on it within, you know, it's a pretty lengthy time. But less than seven, I mean, unless someone had, I mean, nothing horrible happens in that intervening time I, well, that I can imagine that would, that deprives the public of access and for, for weighing in or being participating in the, mm -hmm. in the vetting process. So, and the council can do its vetting process we confident or hopeful anyway that the council can do its vetting process <coughs> within, the, within the prescribed 45 days. So uh, I'm not sure why the lesson sounds there. I, mean, I just I, wanted to bring it up because right. it does stick out to me. And if you receive an appointment on a Thursday night and then that Monday you. Well, you know what? Actually, it might be in there because. The concern that always had been discussed that you, to kill a nomination, you, you could sit on it. And this is basically mandating that it be referred. The less than seven, I, I suspect. Um, you know, giving a deadline by which you could delay, if somebody wanted to delay, you basically only had seven days in which you could delay this. Um, I think this might come as sort of a reaction to um, an old dodge in the council once upon a time referred to uh, uh, minority reconsideration, which was a design, which actually was not a thing legally. <laughs> it wasn't part of the rules or anything else, but it was literally used to kill something, particularly towards the end of a term when you knew you couldn't take it up again and minority reconsideration would be invoked and then everything had for some reason there was magic wand and would, any counselor could do it and it would stop everything. Uh, counselor LaBarge was very fond of that ploy. Ray yes. LaBarge. Ray LaBarge. Ray LaBarge, Ray LaBarge. Ray LaBarge. Ray LaBarge. yes. Let's be clear. Yes. <laughs> the late yes. Your, my, your oh, former my house homeowner. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, but if I just wait on it. So what we're talking about here is not having the committee make a recommendation to the council less than seven days after the committee got it. Right, okay. And so I think the concern was something untoward is gonna happen if this, if this can be referred uh, and the two day notice and Rush all of this is gonna get done within seven days, it's not possible mm -hmm. to do it in a transparent way within seven days. That was the, con that's what I think the concern was. Good and point. that, you know, if something happens in seven days, people were talking outside of meetings. That right. you can't really do this. Absolutely right. <laughs> exactly. There was already been a law violated. If it right, I mean, so. and that was the concern. Uh, that's what I think the concern is. But I don't think there's any prohibition against city services, is that the committee? 
the city services three days later having a meeting and starting the process. They just can't make a recommendation before the seven days. So they have their meeting and they all go, oh, this is, you know, this is great. We love this guy. We approve him. You can't do that. It's got to be at least seven days out. That That's for transparency and for assuring adherence to open meeting. So I think that we're conflating commencing the process right. at city services with making a recommendation back to the council. Well, in so far as we've already described the lesson seven being next and possible to... You, you, I, th I think the issue is really that the, the interpretation that the city council has about the recommendation is that they don't take it up. So, so they won't discuss an appointment they, they won't even discuss an appointment or, or, you know, pass out anything having to do with the nominee until it goes beyond the seven days. But, the, but in fact, a different interpretation of the recommendation back to the city council, as far as it, it could be interpreted, that you can make the recommend, you, the, the committee can come up with a recommendation but that the recommendation doesn't go to the city council for approval until the next meeting. That is possible. You know, so so there's that, so you sort of miss a whole meeting in between where people could have, uh, you know, two weeks have gone by. Um, right. But we're talking we here about the, the obligation of the subcommittee to make a recommendation to the full council. And what this says is that the committee has to take at least seven days before it makes a recommendation to the council. And it can't take more than 45 days. So somewhere between that seven and 45 days is when the, the committee recommends to the full council. So, so, so the committee, so the strictest interpretation that the, the council has taken is that they don't take it up less than seven days. I mean, the committee can take it up less than seven days? That's the, that's that's, the that's way, the way that it's been interpreted. Interpreted, I should say. Well, that's not what the charter says. And you can have a rule to that effect if you want to make it more right. strict. Uh, but that's not what the charter says. What the charter says is that the committee cannot make its recommendation to the council in less than seven days. It doesn't say anything about when the process commences at the committee. So we've been combining those two points right, right. there instead of just the recommendation. So, so can they can they come up with their recommendation the following Monday and then send the recommendation back to City Council the following City Council meeting? What the charter says is that they cannot make a recommendation <laughs> to the council. What the council wants to do in terms of it's charged to the committee not to take this up in less than seven days. The, the council can have a rule on that if they want to, but this is the charter. And this is sort of like the broad framework. But, but what the words say, the, the words say nothing about when the committee commences its process. So, so if they had the person there the following Monday, took up the appointment, discussed it, determined their recommendation, but then didn't send it back until the next city council meeting, that would that would not be a violation. That would not of the be charter. a violation of the charter. Hmm. It might be something that the council frowns upon. Yeah. Well actually no, I don't really couldn't see why the council would frown upon that, but then maybe for clarification's sake for the confusion here. We shall review each candidate for appointment and shall make a recommendations uh, to the full city council uh, not more than 45 days. The lesson, um, I mean the phrase that we want, or basically that makes this clear, is to say, shall not make a recommendation less than seven, right? That's, what they've done is they compound, they've made a compound sentence here mm -hmm. to try and be elegant in the, but they're, clearly it's been misunderstood. And I could see why it's misunderstood. Yeah. Um, shall review each candidate for appointment, mm -hmm. but shall not make a recommendation to the full city council uh, uh, more than seven days, uh, uh, less than seven days. 
but shall make a but I'll, shall make a referral uh, no more than forty five days after the referral. That's not clearing up anything. Easier just to make it two sentences, um, like for shall review each candidate for appointment period, and then the standing committee shall make recommendations to the full city council not less than seven days or more than forty five days. I think it's still kind of. It's that less than seven thing, as, as Pam said, that the committee's been functioning under the assumption that, that what that meant was that it, it basically was untouchable until after seven days. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what would lead anybody well, to Well, you know what, we can solve the problem by making the clarification to Council Chair, who's the chair of the committee, and that Absolutely. once it becomes embedded in legacy, right. everyone will do it from there on in. And, if, and, if, you know, and again, if, if the Council feels like it's too rushed to have a, a recommendation within seven days, pass a rule. Put it in your rules. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard that come up, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bill, are you withdrawing your amendment then? Um, <laughs> you know what? I am. I'm sorry. Yes. I think I, I, I would withdraw the amendment uh, after further debate. <laughs> and uh, then it's incumbent upon me to kind of explain to Council Shara and, and all the other counselors on that committee. You're fine. You've been doing everything right, and you're fine. And you actually, we just gave you, you got a whole new, a whole new week has been granted to you, so. <laughs> okay. And with no amendment on the floor, uh, we, we will have no further discussion or have to vote on any wording changes to section 210. There's no change. Keep it up 45 days and right. don't do anything for sure. Right. I mean, in right. the history of the city, this is still a new document. So exactly. we're still working through. Yeah. We've been doing the shakeout now since this was enacted. But as I said, Pam had to deal with most of the shakeout because she came in just as we were all. And a lot of times we were making. I dealt with quite a bit of shakeout. <laughs> yeah, you did too. That's true. Fair enough. As, as I had to read every ordinance. Every as, ordinance. That's right. Ellen, <laughs> you're a better person. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right, Stan. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for your uh, everyone's attention to that number two was <clears throat> brought to us last meeting by by Lynn um, and um, then if you just want to uh, explain again the reasoning for adding superintendent to Smith's agricultural school to this section um, I'm trying to refresh my memory well, I, like, I think it's you? because the uh, the city council, the mayor, don't make the appointments right. to this that are made by the school committee, the superintendents of Smith School, it's, and the in the city. So the, the mayor doesn't make those appointments. Right, and it's different from the process. Oh, correct. How right. do yeah. they yeah. do yeah. with the, yes. the school? They're elected members. officials. So right, those are elected yeah. bodies that have, make their own committee appointments, and the mayor has nothing to do with mm -hmm. them. So it's just being clear. If if I could just add one more thing. It's just the, the wording is now inconsistent because it says, provided, however, this shall not include persons serving under the school committee and persons serving under the city council, but we didn't answer, add the person serving under with regard. To, so we could either take it out at the, the city council, so it would be persons serving under the school committee, superintendents, city council, mm -hmm. or put the person serving under in three places, but don't leave it out yeah. in the middle there. Yes, I agree with your recognition that that would be inconsistent. Is there a reason for the wording person serving under? Yes, because these are committee appointments. These are these are appointments made by the mayor, okay, to for offices and departments, okay? And so those are persons serving under the mayor. The the appointments made by the school committee are persons serving under the school committee. And so that's Okay. So then my suggestion would be that the, the added wording uh, the person serving under superintendents of Smith's Agricultural School. I would do that. Okay. Any, uh, well, we need a motion to, uh, to add that so moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Can I just ask to clarify this for me? Um, 
everything after the semicolon, uh, this thing provided, however, this shall not include. Why are those things not already redundant with for whom no other method of appointment or selection is provided by the charter? Are these not positions that are provided by the charter? Those are talking about multi-member bodies. Okay. And, and nowhere else in the charter provides for how these... Correct. Okay. The, the appointment of multi-member bodies is in the administrative code. Okay. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, yes, I would add the language, uh, person serving under the superintendent of Smith's Agricultural School. No vote would, uh, would not add that language. Stan Moulton. Yes. <coughs> Robbie Sullivan. Absent. Dylan Gaffney. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Uh, Bull Rice. Yes. Patty Healy. Yes. Holly Fox. Yes. And Simmons. Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Do I have to say Robbie's name? No, no, no. <laughs> no actually, you can skip over. It's okay. already you've identified that she's absent. Right. So you know, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. That passes uh, eight zero. Uh, the next one, section two six, approval of mayor veto, mm -hmm. also brought to us uh, last meeting uh, by Lynn who would um, who would delete. Um, uh, the word uh, resolution, uh, it would delete the, the uh, adjective memorial before resolutions and replace that with non-binding. And it would delete uh, the verb selection and uh, replace that with confirmation of city officers. Uh, well, you want to just clarify again why um, sure. Explain again why these clarifications are needed. Sure. Um, so the mayor would not uh, do a council resolution. Um, so that's just to clean up the language. And uh, <coughs> there was conversation about what was a memorial resolution. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> and they weren't opposite of each other. That's what I established. That's what you said, which is non-binding memorial. No, all resolutions are non-binding. <coughs> no, there was this question of what a memorial meant. Um, I think I was trying to understand the difference between memorial and non-binding or something like that. I think that. all of us were trying to understand what yeah. memorial what does memorial mean. Yeah, it's just in the context that, yes. So replacing it with non-binding was just a little clearer. And then um, deleting selection and replace with confirmation because again just clearer cleaner language that follows what's actually uh, happened and what actually happens um. okay excellent uh, so a motion to approve these three wording changes in section 36 second any discussion okay I guess what well, would uh, we make those changes of wording and then we'll leave them intact. Stan Moulton? Yes. Robbie's oh, <laughs> Dylan Gaffney? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Bob Boris? Yes. Patty Healy? Yes. Molly Fox? Yes. Lynn Simmons? Yes. 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 Okay, that is 280. And the fourth <coughs> item here is uh, under section 7.2. Uh, annual budget policy. This is uh, the language that uh, Councilor Bidwell suggested we add as a sec second paragraph. Um, and I, um, I, uh, uh, I think we, we, um, uh, we heard Councilor Bidwell's reasoning on this. Um, Essentially, he's asking that, a, that a, a formal discussion be held with the mayor early in the process. Is there a motion to approve that sentence? Were you going to have something? Well, I could, if it's put on the floor, I can talk about okay. it on the floor. It's on the floor, so. Uh, do you move, I move for purposes of discussion. Second. Okay, discussion. Um, 
Councilor Bidwell and I have talked about this for actually now two years now. Um, some of the language or some of the things that he's asking, and I understand his frustration was we were going to incorporate it in the rules of the council as opposed to embedding it in the charter. Um, the reason I was reluctant to put it in the charter is I wanted to keep a pretty high standard for things and items that would be part of the use of the term memorialized in the charter. Um, although I don't have any overt objections to what he's suggesting here, but it, it seems more granular and specific than would be necessary for charter language and something that actually um, he, his frustration was, he, when he first discussed it with me, I was a council president. Um, <clears throat> we didn't get it off the ground by the time I had uh, seated the presidency and, and Ryan McDonald took over, and I think Ryan had discussed doing this with him, but um, it never came to pass. I don't know what got in the way or if Ryan had any objections or whatever, but and I don't, I'm not privy to their conversations. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's a, it, it is a good thing. It is not something that, I mean, right now the mayor is very transparent on, on at least budgetary issues. This is more a discussion, general discussion about legislative challenges of life reform. There was once proposed a committee, uh, a legislative committee that would actually uh, review <coughs> legislative matters, matters before the legislature on a regular basis that we that actually died a warning basically because it was um, the this the topics that we were hoping that we would call in uh, our, our rep at the time Peter Cocott he would come on a regular basis and give a presentation um, that became problematic this could also become problematic uh, in some way too but he's I think as an aspiration, it's good, which is what makes me feel a little uncomfortable. You don't put aspirations in a, in a, in a charter. Um, those are hard and fast rules. This is, so that's my concerns. Those are my concerns uh, that I've shared with Dennis as well, but. Other, uh, other discussion? <clears throat> Well, I think as I said last time, I'm wondering if this opportunity is not already present in the calendaring of financial events that happen every year. What, and I believe it's in the state statute, and it, and it requires that a five-year financial forecast be filed by the mayor of the city manager. That 30 days after that, the presentation of a five-year capital improvement plan occurs and then 60 days after that, the filing of the annual budget. And that happens after hearings and the rest. So within that rigidly specified deadline of financial matters occurring every year, there's abundant opportunity for the mayor to present these things and the city council to respond. Now within the basic context of do you do budgets top up or, you know, top down, bottom up, I mean, the, the city manager at the outset of this, and ideally in the filing of the five-year financial plan, should say what he sees upon advice of his financial staff, and then should specify what his goals and aspirations are, again, within a five-year forecast. At that, at that time, the council should respond with their priority directions and add you know, new suggestions, or discuss um, opportunities. That, that's, the, that's the start of the planning process, and then the result of the planning process is revealed in the budget hearings. So I guess I'm agreeing with you, Bill. I, I don't really see a need to memorialize this anywhere because I think it's already in the state code. And being that you're a AAA city, I'd be surprised if you don't do this already. We do. It happens in a, in a number of forms. I think what Councilor Bidwell, and I, he is worse advocate for this, but I acknowledge that, but in the fact that he's not able to be here, he wanted essentially something that was a little less formal, a, a presentation of legislative initiatives and, and, and priorities, and also um, a, a 
more open budget discussion. But you're absolutely right. I mean, first of all, particularly this mayor, actually the last two mayors have been, <clears throat> have conducted public meetings and, and discussed granularly and explicitly their budgets. The, we have a joint hearing with the school committee to discuss the overall budget. That's where the mayor pretty much makes his first presentation about projections. Throughout the hearings, we do the same thing. And in debate on the budget vote, it's also the same process and discussion. It's the, and as far as legislative matters are concerned, those come up as they present themselves. And, and uh, in some cases, it's difficult to try. I mean, we know, for, for instance, that and the mayor has gone to testify just recently in, in, in Boston about um, the concerns relative to the pressures of uh, charter reimbursements and, and, and <clears throat> you know, the school funding code and, and, and where we come up short there. We've said that the mayor said it explicitly that council is, is, has had frequent discussions. Part of the problem comes from the constituencies and level of engagement and how, how far they end. There comes a point in which, short of banging on everyone's door and saying, I'm sorry, I'm going to take up several hours of your time tonight to explain to you what the budget is, mm -hmm. um, we can't force it. It is, has been constantly frustrating. We have very poor attendance at all budget hearings. Um, I suspect that will probably be a little different this time around. But as a rule, we, we literally beat the bushes. We've promoted, we've done social media promotions, we've done, we've stopped short of contests and lollipops. And, and I offered meatball subs. <laughs> So I understand comes with bit of frustration and his desire, but the fact is that we do not suffer from a lack of transparency, I, at least in my opinion, as far as um, opportunities to discuss here and and share private community priorities on budget issues. I, I feel that uh, he believes that we're the court of last resort. Um, he, he's, he's, he, he explained um, that we've talked about doing some council rules which didn't go anywhere by just hoping that it would happen organically, which doesn't happen. So I'd like to propose we provide for these conversations in the charter. Um, you are saying, Bill, that, uh, that you feel strongly that, it's, that, 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 that the charter is the wrong place to address this. I just think it's the wrong mechanism. I think it, it, okay. it actually starts to, uh, to be perfectly honest, a number of the suggestions that I've read about in the minutes I also think have should not be in the charter. Mm -hmm. And the council has pretty broad authority as far as um, creating its own rules, mm -hmm. how the char how the council will function within, within its body. To embed it in the charter, I think, um, diminishes the, the charter, <coughs> where we start putting in laundry lists. Yeah. So that's my concern. I, I mean, it, essentially, um, I don't think it's inappropriate for Council Bidwell to suggest this he actually has had the opportunity to form it as a proposal and present it formally to have the council vote on. He hasn't done that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, does anyone else on the committee uh, believe that this is uh, something that we should include in the charter? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Then I think. Uh, I did move for purposes yes. of discussion, but um, I think you should. So I, I can either withdraw or yes. we can vote yay yes. or nay. Well, I. I, let's, why don't you withdraw? I withdraw. Okay. So there will be no action on this. So I've withdrawn two motions. That's great. That's no great. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> First, he's going to here for a couple of weeks and okay, decide what he wants. Uh, in the bold name of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all caps, all caps. <laughs> Do we not think going forward it might be better if we, in fact, speak to this via a motion that we do not feel it's appropriate, so that we can we, we can at least we can at least say the to anyone that we is in fact yeah. I mean, let's that's that's fair. Or yes, I think Council Bidwell would like to see at least that it was discussed mm -hmm. and that and that you got at least 
like 45 minutes, maybe even yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. What do you suggest that? I'm suggesting we Keep vote on the blue. We vote on the blue. Withdraw your withdrawal. So or, or, or I would move that we I move that, that upon upon considerable discussion the committee votes no on incorporating this notion into the city chart. Okay. Yes. You have a second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now um, any discussion? Okay. On this one, a yes vote uh, uh, means that we're not including this. In the chart, in our recommendation. Yes, this is a no vote. Yes. <laughs> a no vote would, uh, would disagree with that notion. Uh, well, I don't. All right, Annie, go ahead and call it. <laughs> Sam Moy. Yes. Dylan Caffney. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Bob Bullrace. Yes. Patty Healy. Yes. Molly Fox. Yes. Lynn Seven. Yes. Councilor Yes. Okay. You can be the pair of goodness. I will. Uh, you can at least right. tell them we voted on it. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell them so. Okay, that concludes the items that we need to vote on today. Um, the next uh, agenda item is to continue our discussion of issues that were raised by city officials uh, during the last two meetings. And just for Bill and Patty's, uh, 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 so you know what I'm after here, this is not take a position. We're simply uh, taking the temperature of the committee to see whether these are issues that we want to continue discussing, continue to, to uh, include in our, um, uh, in our agenda over the next several months. Um, specifically, uh, we, we held off on the, the term limit suggestion uh, to take a look at, uh, I think several people said, including Alan, said that there was lengthy discussion about term limits during the last <coughs> part of the review. And to give us an opportunity to look at the minutes to see if they helped to sort of inform us. Annie uh, helpfully sent us the link to all those minutes. And uh, uh, there was if you if you if you looked at the minutes, say from fall 2010 through early 2011, you will see a number of references to people who, who spoke both pro and con about term limits. Um, I did not find in those minutes any um, any decision by the by the, the, the charter review committee at that time to uh, you know to wh why they chose not to uh, include term limits in the charter. I, you know, I'll defer to Alan to sort of fill in the, 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 the gap there, but there, there seems to be no specific resolution. Mm -hmm. I remember there being some robust discussion about this. I will say that Annie wasn't taking our minutes back then, so I'm not sure they're as quite as complete and, uh, as your minutes are going to be. But uh, uh, there was a robust this discussion and I think the prevailing view was that we want experienced people running our our government and if they're not doing a good job we have term limits called elections and we left it to election that's my recollection of sort of the the uh, the reasoning for leaving it off it was it was debated on the floor too when it, um, at city council at city council mm -hmm. the, the it wasn't part of it, but it became keep coming up yeah. um, um, and actually to Alan's point the, that uh, the reference that elections are term limits um, the frustration with incumbency and all the issues that come with that um, uh, speaks more to the voters if the voters want the initiative of term limits they have the capacity and the ability to limit terms so both Alan and Bill, do you feel that um, this was thoroughly vetted um, during the last review process? At the time, yeah. I don't know if circumstances have changed, but yes, then it was, it was, it, we, we had a healthy discussion, that the, but the prevailing opinion was term limits were unnecessary. Okay. So does anyone on the committee now feel that this is, uh, you know, seven years have 
have passed and that we want to sort of renew the discussion of, of the term limits. I, I don't want to preclude it. I mean, I, I will make my, I'll be transparent and say I believe that I've always believed that elections are term limits, and the term limits are uh, essentially further limiting the border, oddly enough, voters' choices. That said, um, I also don't want to perfunctorily eliminate the discussion from it, just because that's my opinion. That's not. So. I, I think elections are often become the talking point for why we don't have term limits. And I think that's fair. Um, I think when you want to be thinking about this really substantively, it's when you have a corrupt government, which we don't have, as far as I know, um, in Northampton. And that's <laughs> right. That's something to potentially consider as, as, as a kind of check and balance. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I mean, the discussion of term limits usually comes up with people's frustration. Mm -hmm with incumbency, but the fact, mm -hmm. the irony is those same people invariably vote the incumbents back in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's always, and it's frustration because there is a problem with long-term embedded incumbency. I think that is a problem. I think that can be a problem um, for a, a host of reasons. There's a plus side. There's legacy memories and things like that, and, and uh, also a more sophisticated understanding of the process and so on. But there is, you know, long-term incumbencies, entrenched incumbencies can be problematic, but by, I don't think term limits are the mechanism by which you deal with that, mm -hmm. or should deal with that, at least not as we prescribed it under the, in this republic slash democracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I stated best in the minutes that, I think that you were quoted in the minutes to say that elections are the term limits, and I think that's worked well here, and I think we do always have a problem with long-term incumbents, and that's an uncommon problem, but term limits for all positions, I don't think answers the, you know, the problem of an occasional long-term incumbent. Also, to Molly's point, we haven't really had the long-term incumbencies, personally speaking, um, are the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. right. We have pr pretty high turnover, and Mayoral terms, I would never limit those because the mayor, you want, even if you're talking about the town manager model, you want someone in their long term to do long term plan. Mm -hmm. Just why we have a four year term for the mayor instead of two. Mm -hmm. So, and this also speaks to the issue about the terms. The reason councils are two years is because if you have a problem with an incumbent mayor who isn't coming up for re election, then you can vote. Counterpoint counselors mm -hmm. to to keep them in check. Mm -hmm. If you feel that they're too, they, they have too much fealty to the uh, to a mayor you don't like. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why the structure is that way. Other members with any thoughts on whether this is a, an issue that we should spend more time on this year? No, I concur with what everybody said. I think the answer if people feel that incumbency is a problem, then they should run for something and they should end up, you know, with the recent climate of more people getting involved, hopefully right. that would fix whatever the problem they perceive. But I, I don't see it as something that we need to address, nor would I want to completely rule out this question. I feel the same. Same? Same. Yeah. Okay, well, Nobody wants to rule out discussion, but, but the, the point here, I framed this last time by saying that we're, we're attempting to we know the, the large number of potential issues that we spend time on. So my feeling from what from the discussion is that this is not an issue that we want to spend time on this year. So I will take it off the, take it off the list. All right, number two here is a uh, continued discussion of the uh, suggestion by Councillor Klein that, um, that the, 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 a position of an appointed independent audience person who responds to citizen complaints be included in the charter. This is the one, uh, Molly, where you um, went back to her for more information. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I uh, emailed her and I can share her thoughts with you. 
So, the first, among our questions, one, the first was who appoints, um, who would appoint this person? And she shared that I believe this should be a paid staff position that could sit under the city council slash legislative branch. That said, if there are a way to bridge between the legislative and executive branches with this position, that gives a little more breadth of operation. Um, is the young person paid or volunteer? Um, this would be a paid position, as she mentioned. Um, we, I, uh, share the question of how might this position fit in the structure of municipal government. She responded, I think this person could handle issues submitted by city residents and business owners, take referrals from city councilors, and if this could be worked out with the executive branch, also look at issues raised by city staff who are concerned about a problem that affects city res residents. I see this person coordinating responses with and addressing issues that need coordination between more than one city department. To who might this person report would depend on decision regarding cooperation between legislative and executive branches, city council exclusively, the city council president, or the city council's administrative assistant in coordination with the council president and vice president. Um, how does this ombudsperson's role differ from the constituent services done by city councilors? This person would be a full or half time complaint investigator, issue manager problem solver, an advocate working in conjunction with city councilors and other city departments. This person would have some background in dispute resolution. The, um, the OMSBUD man would assist and bolster the work of city councilors who essentially work only very part-time and often don't have the time to work in a more in-depth way on constituent issues. Ultimately, a successful city ombudsman allows more access to communication with government, feeds information and systems issue she or he gathers from his or her work with residents back to the legislative branch to design policies, legislation that make the city more responsive and effective. Uh, she mentions that other, uh, some other examples, cities like Berkeley, uh, in California, New York, Seattle, Anchorage, and Cincinnati, uh, Ohio have ombudsmen, some of these have different names, but serve in an ombudsman-like capacity. Uh, um, from place to place, the role is nuanced and created differently. Among examples of these differences in NYC, I believe it's an elected position called public advocate that sits on the city council that differs from the role of other city councilors. In Portland, Oregon, the ombudsman sits under the executive branch. Um, I think it would serve the residents of Northampton well, particularly um, because our councilors are so part-time. I think we'd have to do some deep research about how this role could and would function, including looking at other cities, that have these roles or whatever they're called in their respective cities. Um, and she gives uh, a link for more information, and she mentions that she would be happy to um, come speak with folks again, if that would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Molly. Sure. Yeah, would you make sure you forward that email to Annie so it's part of the record? Sure. So again, uh, we're, not, we're not trying to get a sense tonight of whether this idea is um, is something that we want to spend some time on, and as uh, Council Klein points out, it will take deep research. I, you know, I think an ombudsman is in some is someone who it should be independent and um, not connected to government necessarily, but someone who can navigate between parties to try and resolve, and I, I can't imagine the city in a, any situation hiring or having a volunteer without being somehow in conflict with the interest of having an ombudsman because it's supposed to be a separate entity that doesn't have any conflict of interest. And um, it, it sounds to me, I'm not opposed to having some kind of, uh, of uh, entity that assists the city council in resolution of conflict in doing the research. I, 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 what I'm hearing is that is what the problem is. Um, is that there are so many conflicts and problems and sometimes uh, city council just doesn't have enough, it clearly doesn't have enough time or resources to investigate the multitude of issues to sort of get to get to the bottom of a problem to see if it actually is something that government has to take care of. And I'm not sure an ombudsman will really 
serve the need that I think I'm hearing from Alyssa. Okay. Thoughts? Um, actually, what she's describing, it sounds like to me, is a staff person to the council. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, not, it's, it, I mean, I'm, but people usually are better than corporations that have points that there is no legislative side. There's an executive side, and it's an opportunity, at least supposedly, a safe place for people to go when there's a conflict with the, with the executive. The legislative, right, the, I mean, the things she describes are, are is, is better than our job, is, is counseling. She's right. There, there are, it's difficult at times to get too granular on certain issues. But the advocate, I mean, the absence of some of a, a, a example, for instance, a problem where an ombudsman person or a staff member here would, be, would have been helpful. I mean, when Pam worked as the administrative assistant for the city council, she did a lot of that. She actually fielded a lot of the calls and um, I mean, most of them are people in search of trying to figure out what department do I go to to talk about what issues and where are my problems. The counselor can do that as well. The really deep issues like conflicts with a, a zoning conflict or, or, or something, you know, well, one that comes up a lot is snow plowing, for instance. And, and there actually are protocols and processes already embedded for that. It is frustrating sometimes to know that, given our limitations, that there are some things we can't offer magical solutions for every problem that is presented to us. But I think an ombuds person actually sort of reinforces this conception of the counselors as the city, so people feel they're versus it's me against the city and the. The counselors are not on my side, they're against me, or they're creating my problem, they're not my representative. Anything that we do to continue to reinforce that is not a good thing in my mind. I think that, you know, an ombuds person would be hired by this weird combination of the executive and the, and the, and the legislative branch, having actually not to answer to any of them, but to present to any of them. Um, there's no line of accountability. If they're elected, how, what is that? Are they a super counselor? Are they, I don't know what that is. So it's, I love the idea of an ombuds person. I love the idea of actually being one Solomon-like person in the community who can actually help us with the difficult problems that we have. But then we wouldn't need a council, I don't think. Okay. Then we could functionally eliminate the city council because that would just leave us to um, voting on dog ordinances and stuff. And then that could be done by a machine. So, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm being flipped, but I'm not sure how we would do this, and I'm not sure how we can reconcile it with representative governance. Mm -hmm. so. That's about first thing we yeah. Yeah, I think the, with, I see two issues, the conflict between legislative and executive and the frustration that the city council has being part-time and unstaffed. Um, the, I think the biggest problem for me and what I heard um, from Councilor Klein was the resolve interdepartmental problems, act to to resolve problems among departments. Well, that's clearly an executive function. And if, and if this person has no authority in the resolution, no job I would want to have. Um, Unless you pay really, really well. <laughs> really, really well with a contract and, mm -hmm. and the rest. But, um, and I'm being special, you know, I think any of us could probably <laughs> have said that. Um, I'm wondering though, as, as I pondered this in, in hearing what Alicia had to say, if what is being asked for is not more of a triage function, there's, there's an awful lot of frustration that counselors get when citizens don't know where to go to have their problems addressed. 
or when they get sent to wrong places, etc., etc. So, a a a repository or a receiving agent for an issue or a problem, which then could be diagnosed um, and then referred to the council to be sent to the city manager as, the, you know, this was, we, we logged it in, we received this complaint, we've triaged it, and we believe it involves public works and planning, whoever knows what else. And then, and then it's given to the executive department to, to deal with. But, it, but at least it gives the council some help gives them an opportunity to say to the appellant, the petitioner, yeah, we hear you, we've logged you, this is what we're going to do, and stay tuned. But, you know, to get in the muddy waters of what is executive and what is legislative, and to turn, if, if part-time legislative folk are asking for an opportunity to get more involved into executive functions, they are going to become more frustrated, not less frustrated. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't even consider how the city manager might feel about this. The mayor. Right. Thank We're you. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, the city manager should be made. It's, it's a mess. <coughs> I'm sorry. To your <laughs> point, actually, that process was just described actually already occurred. Yeah. And in fact, actually, Lynn's position. Lynn. Uh, and and, 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 and then Laura. also Laura. And Laura. Yeah. Laura and Pam did it. Pam okay. will fit. Okay. But okay. I, I, just, I just wanted to... I don't know if I have another question beyond what Bob shared. I mean, it just, I, I guess I want to just make sure, and I'm not necessarily pro or against um, having this particular person, but is there something that's not being addressed that she's mentioning that, that because either city council doesn't work full time or whatever it is, even if this isn't the right role and position for all of the good reasons that you stated here, I want to make sure that we don't just sort of discount the underlying reasons why this person might be needed um, and let it be something sort of a solution we don't. So one of my questions was actually, have you had this conversation with Elisa and? No. Okay. No, I don't. I mean, I, I mean, I saw it in the minutes when I was out in California mm -hmm. and I, I, it caught me by surprise. And, and so, no, I can't think of a particular incident or circumstance that would actually prompt this is, uh, you know, I, the only, for instance, the only thing, for the, one of the confusions that's occurring, and this is timely because it's the discussion about uh, teacher salaries, and a lot of people are going to come to the city council meeting tomorrow night because there's a misunderstanding that council will present, it will be presented the budget we'll be voting on. How do you transmit that based on pamphlets that you've seen to, to share with people to say, I'm sorry, you're misunderstanding. First of all, the council does not participate in collective bargaining with any agency, especially schools, and there's already an elected body assigned to that. We will not be talking about the budget on, on Thursday night. Uh, the mayor hasn't even presented the budget yet. He has 30 days to do that. Um, try, so what I resorted to, we don't have an ombudsperson or a town, we got rid of the town crier, so I went on Facebook and posted something on that one. But they're not, I mean, it's not, that, that would be, you know, if people, and it would require people to actually find, try to want to find out. They want to find out. If, they, if people are actually trying to find out if, the, if that's on the agenda tomorrow, they can call any number of offices, the mayor's office, they, can, they, they call Pam's office and Pam also has walk-ins more than anybody else because she's the the first door on the right. right? And, and then Laura, who is the administrative assistant, can also explain to people how that process is going. But most of the people are not seeking the information, they're presuming the information. And it's and an ombuds person would be no different in that respect. They wouldn't be able to, they're only as good as somebody asking a question and providing the information that they can cannot. And the, g given the fact that an ombuds person clearly would have no authority, none. They don't have voting authority, they don't have authority over the executive, they don't have, uh, you know, mediation. Um, 
sometimes. Well, if they had a mediation background, but, but but you're saying they're not empowered to. They're not empowered mm -hmm. to actually call for mediation. Mm -hmm. They don't. They can't tell a department you have to talk to this department and I will preside over that. They they can't do that. So. Yeah, I'm wondering if it comes from for, for Alyssa and for other city councilors the conflict that they have with. It's not so much that they need someone to mediate their inability to sort of figure out an answer to a problem and and nav show people how to navigate the system. It's, it's I think, and I hear it from Miriam Lavarge all the time. She's my counselor. <coughs> Some counselors are just overburdened with minutia, and it's. It's, it is astounding how much mm. some of our residents expect from their city councilors. I mean, Marianne is out chasing people's chickens. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not kidding. The things that she is involved in, if people call and so-and-so doesn't have heat, and then she runs around and gets donations of a furnace. And I mean, it's even though there's a clear boundary of what a city councilor is to be doing, some city councilors are hammered, and I think probably Alyssa might be one of those people who, you know, does this part-time job and gets these impossible social issues. I, I you know, as a nurse, I stay in the hospital. It's impossible to take care of stuff, and sometimes, and you know, I, I, you know, I feel like I still say that that's what I'm hearing from Alyssa that this the impossible job that it can be for some people, and. Um, and it will ch chase people away from running for the office. And I think in some situations, people like people always say to me, "Of course, you're going to be the next person at the Marianne, right?" I say, "No, <laughs> no way," because <laughs> I just listen to all the things that she's dealing with. It's just incredible, and um, I don't think it's so much conflict between departments that a resident is having problems with. They just can't get problems solved, and the city council can't do it alone. Can you know, I, I just I want to be clear about one thing. Okay, no ombudsman person is going to mediate disputes between executive departments. The decider of disputes between executive departments is called the mayor. Okay, and that's the only person who's going to resolve disputes. Now, I'm not saying that an ombudsman person couldn't help people in communication, but the idea that an ombudsman person is going to solve problems is it's. But then it becomes my question, is it our role to sort of figure out what the real kind of issue is here? So let's take the ombuds person off the table. I don't care about an ombuds person, but is there a real issue that isn't being addressed? And then one step further, is it even within our purview to address it? I mean, ideally, I would, I, I, and I really can't speak to this, maybe Elisa would have you know, talked with you and you guys sort of had that conversation before and, and what's the problem that we could actually be helpful solving that would right. even, you know, then... That's the most germane comment. Yeah. I don't think it's germane to the charter review. Mm -hmm. Whatever position, I mean, if we're even just talking about another staff person in the council office or something like that, has no business here. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an appropriate place for it. Um, we are talking, uh, and the the challenges that Patty described are apt and, and accurate. And the fact is that um, trying to define that in the charter and what the what the role would be of this person, and to relieve the pressures of being a counselor, the best relief for being a counselor is not running for re-election. <laughs> and that's uh, again a term, don't that, if you phone. will. So it is. <coughs> I want to make sure city councilors are supported and residents are supported. I really do. No, I think, I'm, and that's fine. And I think it's God bless you, but I don't think we should write that in the no. charter. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I appreciate um, your your exploring this, Molly. Lynn, do you have any any from your perspective any, any additional thoughts you want to offer us? Um, I. I don't think it's a. I don't think that position is a good idea. I think it's just going to add another layer that makes it more confusing. I think that I like to think that we're still a small enough community that we all want to work together and try to come up with a solution to a problem. I know in our office we all um, live in Northampton, and if I don't return that phone call or help that person out, chances are I'm going to run into them at some point. <laughs> <in the next laughs> 
And I think that there's a genuine interest in the office to try to solve these problems um, because you want to. That's why we're working for municipal government. Um, and it's, it's I, I don't think there's any office in the city that any of us don't get along or can't pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I have this issue. What do I do? Or can you help? Or I'm not getting a response. Um, and I feel like that's been the way with council as well. If, if a counselor has an issue or if they've tried to reach this department three times and they haven't gotten a call back, they're generally in the mayor's office saying, help, this is yours now. And I just feel like an office buds person would just cloud that a little bit. Okay. Well, after uh, thoughtful discussion and Molly's uh, clarification, with, again, by getting more information from Melissa, um, I believe that we feel as board that, that this is not the proper arena for considering an ombuds person or something like that. So we'll take that off of our off our plate. Uh, the next one, uh, Alan, you want to step away. Um, <laughs> no, the, uh, yes, he's well trained. Um, uh, we discussed at some length at the last meeting. Uh, this, uh, this also was a, 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 a suggestion by Council Klein that at times uh, she she believes at least that the City Council can't use the uh, use the city solicitor because there's a conflict between the legislative and the executive branches and she would like uh, some mechanism that would allow the city council to hire its own legal counsel. Uh, Alan has stepped away because of his, uh, his own financial interest in this particular uh, issue. It's, it's unclear to me whether we can, uh, we can write that into the charter. Uh, we decided to uh, wait for further discussion until Bill was back so we can get your, <laughs> your thoughts on, on this. Well, as I understand, actually, we can hire our own legal counsel. We have hired legal counsel, for instance, uh, when Council LaBarge was suing us. Uh, Council Ray LaBarge, again, <laughs> not Marianne. That um, was me, Bill. What's that? That was me. I was trying to get you out of this <laughs> to represent us. Um, we're not the the problem. This has come up. Councilor Adams brought this up frequently. Um, he himself was an attorney, and uh, he he felt that the he disagreed with some of the advice that was coming from um, Alan actually, and wanted his own attorney or want us to hire our own attorney to serve as counterpoint. The, the fact is that Alan's charge is not to serve the mayor, it's to serve the city. He advises the mayor when the mayor is running or considering running uh, counter to the legal uh, uh, requirements of this mass general law. He advises us the same way. And in fact, he is uh, he's present at legislative matters when we're discussing laws and ordinances, and and when we kind of go beyond, or some ordinance goes beyond the uh, the legal stretching point. So I I dis I disagree with Councilor Adams on that. I think that we've always had the opportunity to solicit uh, alternate opinions if you want to. We don't have the now. The city council, our budget basically pays us, pays our administrative assistant, pays for the audit, and pays for us to go to the MMA conference. I think that pretty much covers it. I think that's the extent of it. And um, we don't have within our means, but we do have within our means the ability to um, uh, appeal to and get funding for an attorney should we need it. But I think what Councilor Klein's referring to and what Councilor Adams is talking to is somebody on staff, legal counsel, that you can refer questions to over and over. The potential problems there, of course, is competing, um, competing information and interpretations and then getting bogged down. I have never at any point thought that Allen's uh, ran counter to his mission or strayed from his mission of serving the city. 
He's the city solicitor, not the mayor's solicitor. And this is actually just a reaction to um, how we interpret the law versus how, how the solicitor interprets the law, not how the mayor interprets the law. Mm -hmm. So that, and given our kind of shortfallings and legal understanding, we are not the experts. And Alan's always been capable of defending his position and his opinions in each case. So I, it always makes, and, and also, again, I'm not sure this is something that would go into the charter. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was that was my question, yeah. and, and I also have uh, I have my doubts about it. Yeah. Uh, the point that Bob made last time, if you want to repeat it, Bob, is that uh, he Bob believes that the city solicitor should be a full time staff position that serves the entire city. Yeah. Well, I I recall when I mentioned that to Alan, he said something like my office is across, you know, my office is somewhere else. And I just, you know, it's a big job, it's a big organization, you've got the council, you've got the mayor. Do you, do you also advise the school department, school committee? They have their own. They have their own? They have their own labor council. Yeah. Um, well, I respect, I respect the job, I respect the size of the organization. I believe it should be a full-time person. But this is out of our purview, correct? That would be the administrative code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's on the. Who hires the solicitor? Is, is it a mayor? The mayor. It's a mayoral appointment approved by the council. And some 20 years ago, <coughs> yeah, Little West Network Allen. did have a full-time city solicitor with a, a staff, an assistant, mm -hmm. and a staff person, and a full analysis was done. I wasn't here then, but. From what I recall, a full analysis was done on um, cost you know, versus hiring out versus needing special attorneys to handle their different areas. And it was um, less expensive to contract it out. I don't think this is a cost item. I think this involves all sorts of considerations. The, the job has become more complex. The legislation has become more um, you know, volatile. The demands of the organization become much more um, rigorous. You know, there's just questions that come up now on a regular basis that that require attention. And but I think the question on the table is whether the city council should have access to their mm -hmm. own, you know, their own attorney at times. And I think the the bigger question is, do we need, you know, more more lawyer time? But and I, and I think that the, if the city council is, has had a uh, history and a practice of being able to um, consult their own council, I don't think it has to be in the, um, in the charter. I just would hope that there isn't anything um, that would prevent them from doing so, should there be something pressing. I mean, but they don't, you don't have a history of consulting council. No, I mean, the there, there's one off. <coughs> the, the, yeah, you know, the the when we did have a full time solicitor, um, there were other problems that presented themselves. A lot of problems, actually. Um, and what we do now is actually Alan's job is to review um, how we function under Mass General Law. Other issues, he doesn't do collective bargaining. He, we, that's a different law. You know, he doesn't represent us in suits by and large. Actually, I don't spend more time suing us than actually <laughs> representing us. But it's not just him. I don't want to speak about him specifically. The fact is, is that the city now hires uh, attorneys with those specific skill sets as mm -hmm. opposed to a generic mm -hmm. single office of, of uh, general practitioner, if you will, who, um, and that's where we got into trouble. So, uh, a a full-time city solicitor who was out of her depth on a number of issues that were relevant to suits. So, um, so as things became more complicated, part of the analysis that Lynn referred to, and yes, it was a cost savings, but that wasn't the primary driver. 
It was what was going to be the most efficacious way to represent and protect the city. And it turned out we go towards specialists. We, we favor specialists, and we have a solicitor keep us honest as far as mass general law goes, and um, and, and and have those silos. So in in that respect. Adding another attorney for the city council who's on staff or on call or on billable hours is an expense. But that's not, as you, I think Bob's right, that shouldn't be a consideration here. But to what end? Um, because we want one solicitor serving the interest of the city of Northampton, not an attorney that would automatically put the solicitor in the silo of the executive and then another attorney in the silo of the of the legislature creating a disparity that I don't think would be would be practical. I think um, you know I, again I, I don't know how how you do your job. Um, I just know that when I when I served um, we had executive meetings twice a month and that's where all the the department heads appeared and, and the city attorney appeared. And so on a regular basis, matters came forward that required some sort of legal advice, you know? And that was just on an executive level. There were constantly matters of ethics, conflict of interest, and other things that occurred among the employee. We have a thousand employees, you know? Um, so. I don't, I don't know whether, you know, the, the city attorney is, considers he's full-time now, part-time, or what. I'm just saying, in the, in the depth of the organization of this size, with the, with the amount of money that gets spent, and the demands that come up now from God only knows where. I mean, um, I, I, you know, I had, a, I had a Bitcoin issue where, you know, we, we got that we had to deal with, we, you know, it was not the kind of thing where, you know, um, I could wait for contracted help to appear. You know, it's just, to me, the, the demands of the job are, are just pervasive and, and all the time. And, uh, are you so arguing for a full-time job for Alan? Or yes, I am. Yeah. That's well, what it sounds like. Well, I, it's like the third time I've said it. I, under the notion that he serves both the mayor and the council, you know, either he gets cloned or, you know. Well, this, but, but uh, changing the structure of the, the city solicitor is, n is not in our, I don't think that's something that we want to do in the Am I right on that, Bill? I, that's, I would be uncomfortable, yes. Yes. I mean, that's a bigger issue that would might even have to be a valid question, I think. Yes. And uh, to Patty's, Patty's question was uh, make sure that the city, there was nothing preventing the city council from hiring its own council if necessary, which has occurred in the past. The only thing that I can think of would be money, and you say that there is, there is some access to to uh, funds if, if the council... Is process? Well, that's a good question because it, the situation I described when we hired Alan uh, happened before the charter change. I'm not sure of the process by which we would have to hire our own attorney, by which we may hire our own attorney. Um, I can think of circumstances when we would have to if the council, but right now, if the council is being sued, Alan would, uh, I, this is tough for Alan because I could say something wrong and he's, he has to sit there and not say anything, but he would, could recommend someone who would represent the, the, um, the council in the city would be obliged to defend us. Mm -hmm. um, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you so, have practice insurance? Are you a liability? We, we don't. I don't think we're subject to malpractice mm -hmm. law as is, is counselors because I, I know I'm not boards sure. sometimes have that liability. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm on a couple boards that are yeah. where you're covered by your yeah, bond. But this is we have different immunities, I think, at least as I understand it. it let me just say, I hope. 
Yeah, you're really not selling this. Okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, again, what I'm hearing then is that this is not something that we feel is worth our time to to further review and explore this this year. Not as this committee. Not, mm. not, no. Right, not the charter. Yeah. The charter review committee. I have to say, I feel uncomfortable when I reject these because I have stood in opposition to these things with other council. Oh, we're totally throwing you under the bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No way so around it. It just makes me feel uncomfortable when I vote, when I actually have more influence in this respect, in this discussion, than the councilors who are lobbying for it. I do mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable in that respect. So, but, I, I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. But this oh. doesn't preclude them from yeah. bringing this up. On the it's council yeah. Yeah. It's just saying that the yeah. charter review committee feels like it's not after the recommendations they can it certainly can come up on the council floor so can add my on the council there. floor yeah yeah so i can have my fight there provided i'm still there okay. i mean it's true i will say that bill's sort of being the final voice without other counselors oh, I, here I, I, i'm not i'm not regarding no. bill as the final voice he is Thank you. one okay. of, of nine voices and his voice represents the perspective of having served on the city council and having been in the position of same as Councilor Klein of 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 weighing uh, the the, uh, the the ability to call on the city solicitor versus the need for separate council. But and Stan if we're oh, excuse me, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say if we're saying we've decided as a committee after you know Bill sort of shares his perspective that we're not going to be discussing this further. There is this sense that, but are we going to be? I, I was going to say I also like I without Bill's input, which I appreciate, think this is the inappropriate place to make these changes, and therefore have the discussion. Yeah. Well, my feeling is that if any one of you feels strongly about continuing the discussion uh, and review of any of these ideas, then we'll leave it on on our plate. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to try No, to that makes sense. I mean, to be honest, after this discussion, what I'm really feeling for myself is that I don't quite, maybe others feel the same way, I don't quite have um, a honed in enough understanding of what is and isn't um, within the charter's purview. Because of course, any anytime a counselor or resident is gonna be bring up any issue to me and say, this thing isn't being solved, I really want it to be solved, I'm gonna be like, how can I help? Um, and I really realize what I'm needing to be doing is sort of thinking, but is this the right place, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. So well, that this, piece I need to bring, clearly need to bring myself up to speed with. Is this, <coughs> is this the right place and is this worth our time given right. that we have eight and a half more months to right. produce a report with right. recommendations? I guess I would just say, say with respect to the city council, retained council that I still, I don't, still don't think this has to go in the charter, but if we, because there isn't a process, I wouldn't mind having something that says that the fact that we have a city solicitor doesn't preclude the ability of the city council from hiring council if they deem necessary in conflicts that may require, you know, more intense look at this. I, I think we could, when he's not recused, we can ask the solicitor to draft a memo describing the avenue by which the council could and should hire uh, another return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That yep. Satisfying? Yeah, just like process, I think, that right. tying that up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Alan, you may be saying By the way, there's a uh, there's a question made at some point. <laughs> uh, so. we don't, really? We don't follow me. <laughs> May I just say that uh, there's a reason that the council president selected Bill of the, all of the councilors to be the representative of the council. And, and I, for one, and having nothing to do with city solicitor, he's here to give a perspective from the council and it doesn't mean that he's superseding the council but this is the process, and, and, the, and the council president chose him for a very good reason. Yes. Many very good reasons. Yeah. Here, here. I, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. And, and, I'm not, but I, and I want to always make clear that I'm not speaking for the entire council. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm speaking right. only for myself. You're the liaison yeah. for the yeah. council. Right. It's good and I think, I think we all understand that, Bill, that you're not speaking for the council. 
right, the, the last item here that we wanted to decide whether we want to spend time on is another uh, uh, suggestion that Councilor Bidwell made uh, during his presentation uh, at the last meeting. This has to do with legislative priorities. Uh, and again, this has to do with uh, an agenda item in, G um, in January. You have a discussion with the mayor about the city's legislative priorities for the, the state legislative session for that year. Uh, and I think, I think Bill, <laughs> Sorry. Bill, Bill has spoken to, uh, to this earlier, and if we feel that this is inappropriate, as we did. Uh, the annual budget policy uh, suggestion, Council did well. I think uh, for, for, for the same reasons, we can say that no, we're not going to spend right. any more time on it. I think quite plainly that, um, and I appreciate Council Goodwell's frustration with this. I think it's laudable and noble to uh, to strive for, but I think what he should do is to propose it on the council floor and get a second to endorsing it and, and either make it an ordinance or or ultimately actually probably better to introduce it into the council rules. Um, embedding it in the in the charter again is is not necessary. It's it's swatting a fly with a shotgun, so wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's inappropriate. I agree. Okay. Does anyone else have any different um, views about can, this? Can I just yes. also point out, it says in 2-7C, um, the City Council may request specific information from the Mayor on any municipal matter and may request that the Mayor be present to answer written questions relating to that information. So there is a process to getting the Mayor to the City Council to discuss. And the point of fact, he does. And he does. Okay. Without any All right. So um, that also is not going to uh, take up any more of our time. All right. Um, <laughs> we wanted to have uh, a little more uh, discussion about the forum in two weeks, um, and uh, uh, anything new you want to say about it? I made the change to the flyer, just taking off election scheduling. That's Same beautiful. Last time. Uh, NCTV is confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, Where is it going to be? JFK. Community room. And, and what did you find out about the, the end time? Do, should we plan to be out of there by, by 10? Okay. Yeah, if we can, if we are there after that, it just creates a little bit of uh, <coughs> scheduling issues with custodial staff locking the building up. But. Right, and, and they have, I mean, meaning that we should try to wrap up the form by 9.30 at the latest. Yes, because uh, NCTV needs about a half an hour to break down. Right, okay. So, I mean, we've been planning it. We took off the end time because we don't know how many people are going to be there and how many people want to address us. We've been planning it from 7 to 9. We can be a bit flexible, but we want to be done by 9.30 at the latest. Do you want me to add an end time? Um, well, I mean, I think we, we talked about it last time and, um, you know, said that we, we, would, we would be somewhat flexible depending on the number of people who sure. Show up. I don't think it hurts to put it in time because it's always a message to people that you know you always end up going over, but it's a message that there is an end in sight. Right. It's not a bad thing to do. I guess the concern is that if you know five people show up yeah. and they're at seven o'clock and you said you're gonna be there at nine thirty and you're done at seven thirty, what do you do for the next two hours? I guess you could do some more of this business. But. What do you think about that? <laughs> What's the council Whatever. perspective on this, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, if, if you put an end time at, at, to Patty's point, it does. If someone's there, they're prepared to fill up that time all the way up to the end. Ah, it will happen. So um, could we also make an announcement? Well, if the well, room is packed, yeah. could we make an announcement yeah. that we have to intend to continue that's by another yeah, 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 because if, all, if only five people show up, and if we're done by eight, we have no reason to stay beyond right. eight, mm -hmm. and I don't want people coming in after that expecting to find us. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I have a good authority. There are going to be a lot of high school Yes. Of course. Yes. So, um, 
Yes. They love to stay out late. Ask yeah. a question. Is is it the intent of this forum to educate you? Yes. Is, mm -hmm. is that the yes. intent? Okay. Yes, We're, it's to inform us. So I shouldn't invite the 300 election workers that that uh, might be interested in the the topic of election Ooh. and and uh, hear what is being like the ranked choice. You mean or no election What's scheduling? You're talking about oh, election, talking about the workers, election yeah. workers. There's about 268 course, election why workers. Not? Of but, what, well, but what is their <laughs> What, what do they want to tell us? <laughs> I don't know that they want to tell you anything. I'm just, I mean, but if something, you know, if, if they're in, there's, you know, a, a lot of people they're the ones there. carrying out whatever is mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. ultimately yeah, decided. Yeah, should exactly. be right. I, well, yeah. I mean, sure. I'm not I mean, sure at this point that they would have a perspective because some of it might be even new to them, so. I feel like we should invite any potential stakeholder. Right, okay. Okay. right. No one should feel unwelcome yeah. um, and certainly question. if you feel that they should know about this forum um, yes okay. please tell us but it's not just us it's the public too mm -hmm. we're trying to educate like we're trying to this is for everyone mm -hmm. right our committee mm -hmm. and the public to understand mm -hmm. what we're doing can i ask how how um you plan on doing the forum how what the rules are for we're so glad you asked <laughs> okay. yeah. yes. we have invited uh, Bob has invited uh, the, the advocates for uh, well, voting choice mask. I heard from them today. Hi, Robert. We will definitely have a speaker or speakers, and we'll use the full 15 minutes. We recognize this is super important, so we'll be bringing in some big kahunas. That was from Andy Anderson, who's the local guy who I've met with several times, and he's excellent. Mm -hmm. we met with him and a couple of legislators, so and I was delighted when I heard that was Andy, but they're bringing in um, the guy who's going to make the presentation is called... I'm sorry, well, this is the right choice? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the, the, organiza the statewide organization the that's advocating for yeah. this is called Voter Choice Mass. And so the speaker is going to be a man named Howard Fain, F-A-I-N. And they're prepared to give a 15-minute presentation mm -hmm. and, then, and then whatever your pleasure is after that. Well, that's ranked choice voting. We've invited Pam to speak to several issues, mm -hmm. including uh, you know, no excuse voting. Yeah. Um, and we've invited the Youth Commission to address the lower municipal voting age. I believe that we decided two weeks ago that any invitees uh, collectively would have 15 minutes to present. Got it. That's what I'm trying and to And then yeah. we're going to have a sign up sheet for anybody else who wants to speak. And I, I think we said three minutes. Yeah. Depending mm -hmm. on the yeah. One question we had about Bob, Bill was whether to have sort of a an anti um, group if we were sort of having a pro group to kind of. I, in in the interest of yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. Although I haven't seen anyone identified right. certainly as a group yeah. in opposition to any of these discussion points. I think there'll be individuals who might. Um, Do you think that's enough? That's I think that was sort of the question. Enough to leave it to the individuals to sort of represent that side. Is that fair? I suppose so because I mean you, you can't really compel people or agencies to come. Mm -hmm. I think you can invite them as Bob did, but I don't think. I don't know of yeah. I don't know of an organization that's anti-right choice. I, I haven't heard that. I mean, there, there are clear. I'm sure there are people who are opposed to it. I mean, the, because it was a contentious. Mm -hmm point the last time when we discussed mm -hmm. it, so. Um, and also the age 16, we'll hear about that too. Yeah, I mean, I, mm -hmm. the, the, we get pushed back, but they usually, you know, they're Facebook comments. So mm -hmm. it's sort of, mm -hmm. take that for what it's worth, so. If our role is sort of more neutral facilitator and making sure this is fair, do we, do we have to put into some due diligence to sort of seeking out such a group or seeking out this anti-16 year old person? Well, I don't, Again, I don't know of any organized opposition to rank choice. I don't know of any organized opposition to the lowering of municipal voting age. I think we're publicizing this well enough so that individuals will attend and will speak pro or con um, to whatever issue they, they choose to speak to or issues. And it isn't the case that in both of these two matters it's going to come to a vote of the citizens anyway. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I think that's important. Yes. 
to put that point on. Yes. I think if we structure it, if, so if, we, we, if we make the recommendation, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. We structure the, the event so we have the, the three um, presentations, but then we allow the panelists to respond to questions and with, but with a, another person from the charter review um, so that when um, there's, if, if there's confusion about whether or not the charter review group is proposing this, we can bring the conversation back to we're presenting information about proposals that are coming to us and that and remind people that there will be a vote in the end. But I think that might, it's possible that that, will, that question will come up a few times. So if we have, if we're prepared to redirect conversation and redirect after those questions come up, that we're not making a decision, we're not advocating for anything in particular, we're offering this as a forum. And that, right. When you, know, you say the panelists, you're referring to? Uh, the people who represent the three <coughs> The private groups. The and, 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 yeah, and the yeah. youth commission. Yeah. Um, we need to be available as a panel to ask, to answer specific questions. Uh, well, I mean, I don't see them as, as sort of, as being sort of at the, at the front of the hall. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they could respond if, if there are questions directed at them by someone in the audience. I'm more, I'm more concerned about making sure that anybody who comes, any individual who comes and wants to speak is, is heard. Mm -hmm. And I want to leave plenty of time for that. It's, it, the, con my concern is, and I'm glad to hear this, I mean that, um, what happens sometimes is that without the um, with, uh, clear parameters, you would have people debating from the from the audience. Mm -hmm. I think each person who speaks has to do it formally, get up, identify yourself, yes. and speak to a point, and not speak against someone or something. The comments should be direct to the chair. Um, that you don't get in a yelling debate, someone screaming from the back and saying that's not true or something like that, that that would be ruled out of order, but that someone would have an opportunity to come and share their opinion without interruption. Yeah. And, um, and th as long as those rules are defined in the beginning, it, it does cut down on a lot of uh, heat. I don't think there's actually going to be too much mm -hmm. drama. I hope there isn't, but I've been wrong every time I predicted that, so I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not laughs> <hairy. Thanks for laughs> uh, so. that, that would be my conception of how we would run this, that if, if someone from the audience who was uh, uh, speaking um, had a question, a point of clarification, they could direct it through me, and I might ask for a, mm -hmm. a uh, somebody who would present it to clarify. That's, okay. that is, that it, I think that's the wisest for okay. mm -hmm. good. Now the only other thing I wanted to uh, revisit was Molly, you had suggested that, that in addition to or instead of a sign-up sheet that we put oh, sheets right. of paper up with, and I, I'm, I'm not clear on what, what you had mm, intended. I mean, I, I think the format that's being discussed here now sounds okay. like I really appreciate having Bill kind of here to be able to weigh in. I think that format tends to work well with the workshop, like with one yes. facilitator. Sure, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what I, I was thinking as well, that that's more kind of a... Um, uh, like park your questions here and we'll get to them, but we don't know how many people are going to show up for this and all kinds of things, so... And we'll that's be, more kind of a group process. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And CTV will be recording it and he will get the writer's grant. <laughs> right? Yeah, I was going to ask if you wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, it is a meeting of our mm -hmm. body. Yes, we should have you there, um, Annie, and, and perhaps is there combat pay? Does the mayor get combat pay for this? Uh, the council. <laughs> <laughs> She's not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to clarify, so the room, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but the room is set up like a horseshoe. So the committee would sit behind the horseshoe. We'll make sure there's name tags for all of us there. Um, and then you'll have the presenters at the podium present. Yes. So okay. Yes. And then they each have 15 minutes, and then are we doing questions after each is done, or no. let no. them all present and then you can open it up to yes. anything? Okay, yes. so and 45 all, minutes of presentation? Well, up to 15 minutes. I, I, I don't know okay. if they'll all take I'm pretty minutes. sure the Youth Commission's presentation, it's finals and stuff, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they're not going to Sorry. exhaust the 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have a sign-up sheet that circulates 
and it'll just be a general sign up sheet, not specific to each topic. Right. Okay. Right. Great. Right. Just so I can have everything right. ready when we. Right. Uh, I have okay. sent I have sent press releases out. I know that um, Sam and I are going to be on WHMP on Bob Flaherty's show next week sometime. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm certain the Gazette will write the story ahead of the. Uh, oh, you know form. people you have contact there? Still have contact there. I still see them respond to me. And uh, the Valley Advocate has in also indicated. Oh, good, okay. good. So, good. And then there's a, there's a group, Pioneer Valley Resist, that I can send out something to um, that sort of connects all the sort of social justice groups in the area. But what is it that we're um, putting out? There's a press release somewhere yes. that I... Would you like me to forward you the press release? Yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah, okay. can you send that to me as well? I'll send it to everybody. I'll send everybody the press release. I have a question. Yes. It says from last week's minutes that I am handling promotion through social media. However, Lynn's putting it up on the Facebook and Twitter. What do I need to do? Well, I, just, <laughs> I, think, I think it was just that you and Lynn would do that okay. together. We'll would make probably sure that just that post this. That's what I figured. Okay. okay. Well okay. done, Sam. Good. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so this, <laughs> this, this is, just to be clear, this is the fifth Tuesday. Uh, we will be at JFK, and then we will meet the following Tuesday, May 7th, for, as our regular first Tuesday of May meeting. So we'll have two weeks in a row when we're together. Oh, that would be nice. Yes, it will. So I've been missing. So well, to catch up with all that. <laughs> okay. So, so just to, in the event that, because we're not going to be taking any votes at that Correct. meeting, if it worked better to have the meeting, well, it will be taped, but if the minutes were to be transcribed after that meeting, because there won't be any votes, would, in the event that possibly doesn't work for any schedule to make it to that meeting, is there any opposition to that? I just don't know that it's necessary you're, to have her sitting there. You're saying that the minutes could be transcribed from the uh, from the NCTV. Yeah, podcast. because it's presentations. It's yes. not. Um, that's a full that's fine. Group discussion. I, I don't have any problem with that. Okay. I, I don't know. We can talk about that later. Does, I just uh, didn't Alan, do you see any issue with that? As long as minutes are taken. Okay. And I will say that it's great to have all these minutes, but it, you know we have the video of it and. and the open meeting law does not require the depth of, of transcription that Annie's been doing. So, I mean, if this is just a forum, no votes are going to be taken, she can watch the video. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, Annie. I don't know why she didn't want to be there. Okay. Not every night. Not every is. meeting. Because you're going to be no, here. No, no, I know, but yeah. the depth of which the minutes are written. Well, <laughs> That, that's not for these meetings. That, that's for the public. We don't care what they say. There's so much flexibility in minutes and yes. how, they, how they're yes. required to be. Sometimes they're doing great job in votes. Yeah. The best some, thing some happened to me is just the you know, first, enough. second, and uh, we're open, the seconds, and the vote. And then the rest mm -hmm. of the meeting, you have no idea what the hell went on. Right. And that's pretty much the bare minimum that's required by the state, particularly if it's being recorded. But your minutes are rocking. Yes, yes. yes. You're, you're, rock very you're a rock star. <laughs> right. Any, any further I was just confused yes, what you yes. said about the next meetings. You said that that would be our fifth meeting, and then the Well, the I'm, forum so I'm pointing out that the forum is on the fifth Tuesday of the month, right. which oh. doesn't always occur. So yeah. just don't forget that we're also meeting May 7th, which is okay. our normal. That's what I thought you meant. Okay. Yes. <laughs> is there a budget for pie at these <laughs> if I get a reminder, I will do. I would be honored. Ooh, oh. yeah. Let's just give me a reminder, like a day before that I'm sure. All right, Molly, I'll bring you in charge. Oh. I, 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 I will take on that. Charge. <laughs> okay, but we're still going to end. We're still going to try to end at a decent hour. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Any further business? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.